welcome to part four on my series on producing robust programs. Today we're going to be looking at planning for contingencies, which will be fun and games for the whole family. So however carefully thought through our input validation is, there are situations and combinations of data that could lead to unexpected results. So for example, combinations of acceptable data may lead to unexpected outcomes, for example, the dreaded division by zero. Or the eventual end user may make unexpected choices, leading to unexpected problems. Users, either accidentally or deliberately, don't do what we expect them to do, and that can cause problems. And there are users who will, of course, deliberately try and break our system, either for fun or to take advantage of some sort of security problem. It is almost impossible to consider all of these, but having a plan B, a contingency plan, is always a good idea. So if you're not familiar with the word contingency, this is a future event or circumstance which is possible but cannot be predicted with certainty. And planning ahead for these kind of contingencies is a key feature of defensive design that we looked at in a lot more detail in the last lesson. So let's look at some possible things we could plan ahead for. Uh, division by zero is a classic example. We should always do some sort of check whenever we're going to be to do a division just to make sure we are not dividing by zero. So something very simple like this, just checking if the divisor is zero before I go ahead and do that division. We could also have input output errors. Anytime you're reading or writing from a file, you can always have problems. So, for example, a file may have been moved or renamed. A file may have become corrupted somehow. A file or a folder may be read-only when we're trying to write to it. Or a disk may have run out of space. A robust program needs to be able to deal with all of these errors before it can continue processing. So, again, anytime you do any sort of input-output, you have to be planning for errors that could occur. Another situation where we could always have errors is when we're dealing with networks. What happens if the user is running an online application and the connection is lost? A robust program should report the error and give the user the option to retry rather than simply crashing. So if, for example, as a teacher, I use a system with my school uh, that requires constant access to an online database. If that connection is lost for any reason, it typically just crashes and gives an error message, which is really inconvenient because you're walking around the school with your laptop. You go in and out of Wi-Fi range. If you're out of Wi-Fi range for more than a couple of seconds, the whole application crashes and you have to restart it. So again, the users, the people who made that program didn't plan ahead. They didn't plan properly for that contingency. And it is really annoying client difficulties. This might not be something that's so much of a problem if you're just programming away in high school or university, but if you're doing this for a living, you're going to have to deal with the people who are paying you to develop software, the clients. And clients sometimes change their mind in the middle of the software development process. They may want to add or remove features or even change the whole direction of the project. And you end up as this person here, when they want to completely change how everything works. How can we try and mitigate for this? Well, hiring talented programmers can help deal with this. You can also ensure that the deadlines allow sufficient time for modification. Planning for such contingencies is essential if we are to create a robust program. So some of the things that we can do when writing a program to help ensure that things work smoothly is using meaningful prompts for each input, to make sure the user knows what they should be typing in. We should be looking to trap any unexpected inputs. We should anticipate misuse of the system and build in error trapping for these events. We should consider the combined effects of different valid input values that may lead to errors later in the program. So the user might enter correct data, but when that correct data is all put together later in the processing, you may, may end up with an error like a division by zero. And for online systems, you have to be very careful to make sure you authenticate the user correctly. Speaking of authentication, I'd just like to spend the last part of this video going through that in a little bit more detail. So key point, 
is that only authenticated users should be able to access data. Most systems do this by requiring a username and password. It's the classic authentication system. But as a programmer, as a designer of soft software and systems, you need to sometimes think a little bit beyond this. So for example, a robust system should allow the user to recover a forgotten password securely. Usually this is by sending a password reset link to a previously registered email address. You've also got to think about things like captures. So you probably recognize things like that from your own travels on the World Wide Web, but these are used to ensure that software bots do not complete web forms and pretend that they're humans. So using a capture can help make sure that it's a real human who's trying to register or log on to software and not a piece of software. Okay, I hope all that was useful for you and I will see you on the next video shortly.